Professor Tribe, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Or we should say thank you for welcoming us into your home. <laughs> um, I want to start by talking about Barack Obama, your former student and uh, research assistant. Is that what you mm -hmm. called him? That's um, what he was. He was great. We're all still trying to understand him, and people are starting to evaluate his presidency. What about the way he's conducted himself as president has surprised you, given the, the younger man you knew? You know, it's been enough years, and he was sufficiently brilliant and in a sufficiently limited role that I could never have predicted what kind of president he would be. I certainly knew he would be something important and remarkable, um, but what kind of judgment he would show, how controlling he might be, what sorts of people he would surround himself with, those were things I couldn't have pretended to know. Um, I obviously had enormous hopes for him, and when he was elected I thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, he's been impressive in some respects, perhaps disappointing in others. Uh, it's hard to I've say. I've heard you use that expression with our friend Charlie Rose in an interview, disappointing in others. Enumerate the ones that have been disappointing. Well, I, th I thought that he would be more effective in achieving the goals that he had in terms of civil liberties, closing Guantanamo, uh, ending some of the surveillance abuses that he had complained about earlier. Uh, I think maybe he discovered when he became president that it was a little harder than it seemed, and so it's not unexpected mm -hmm. that nothing that happened would have followed the precise trajectory he had in mind. But I obviously had aspirations and hopes. I think also I believed, perhaps naively, you know, that, uh, that being the first African-American president, he would be able to bridge the gap between the races, at least to some extent. I never thought that our deep racial divide would be cured by, by the elixir of having a black president, mm -hmm. but I would not have expected if somebody had asked me, would racial relations be worse now than they were when he became president? Uh, I wouldn't have expected that, and yet they do seem to be, if not, if not worse, at least no better. Uh, so I, I'm disappointed in those respects. It's not so much that he didn't have the ability, it's that the problems were even more massive than I could have expected. You, you taught both, uh, both President Obama and Chief Justice Roberts. I know you don't right. know Chief Justice Roberts nearly as well as you know President Obama. Right. I'm interested in their temp their, their comparing and contrasting their temperaments. You've talked about how President Obama might have been better suited to being a Supreme Court Justice than maybe being President temperamentally. Many people say that Chief Justice Roberts is a very political uh, Chief Justice. So just mm -hmm. talk about a little bit about the, the, ver the temperaments of those two guys and the roles in which they found themselves. Well, it's certainly true that Barack Obama is an extraordinarily thoughtful and careful person. He weighs and measures the pros and cons of everything almost endlessly. And in, in a way, although he's decisive when he finally comes down one way or another, um, he's an ideal judge. I mean, he listens, absorbs things, does not have deeply embedded preconceptions. He's not particularly ideological. I think in many ways John Roberts is more ideological, more committed to certain ways of looking at the world. I don't think he's simply a politician in robes. I think that's a mistake. But on the other hand, he has a very clear and crisp world view, and he's very determined about seeing the world through the lenses that, that, uh, that he has ground for himself. And I think in many ways it is a paradox that the more political of the two is John Roberts. He certainly is also the more sort of sociable. I mean, there's nothing unfriendly about Barack Obama when you get to know him, but I don't think he is as deeply engaged in sort of backslapping and making, making friends, whereas it was very clear when he was a brilliant student of mine that John Roberts would offend no one. He, was liked by everybody. He was a person who spent time with everyone. He made allies across the ideological spectrum. How deliberate that was, I can't say because I didn't get to know him as well, but he was certainly an effective politician. 